As I'm sure most of you guys are well aware by now, there was a new batch of skull mounts added to the Hunter Classic for the Trophy Lodges, and one of them was the Roosevelt Elk, which is something that we've hunted a little bit for in the recent past, and that addition really got me thinking about our Trophy Lodge, and I got to look into the things that maybe we could improve, and the biggest one for me is actually an older skull mount. Right now we have this 1321 Gadwall up here, and I'd love to get a Grey Wolf Skull Mount. We've got now a Puma over there, a Eurasian Lynx down here, and a Feral Goat over on this side. And then we have the Brown Bear Skull Mount. So a Grey Wolf would be a really cool addition. And I'd love to improve our Mule Deer as well. Our other deer species are pretty darn good. A 195.5 Blacktail, and of course, our 201 Whitetail. 236 Mule Deer is really solid, but if we could Eclipse 240, that would be a really, really cool thing. So... We're going to head out into Timbergold Trails and see if we can have any luck with Mule Deer and Grey Wolves. And really not a bad deal getting a Grey Wolf coming in at our first spot, but this will be probably a little bit odd. So we're going to go ahead and take this with the 10 mil. Going to try to drop it in its tracks. And we're actually not going to claim it right now. The reason for that is we're in a Grey Wolf competition and that comp is basically for your highest scoring of your first two harvested wolves. So we can shoot other wolves, but if they're going to be low scoring, we're actually better off just kind of letting them lay. So I'm going to mark this, and then more importantly, I'm going to just draw a little X on the map right over that marker, and we'll come back and get this a little bit later. Maybe if we hunt our way down through the south or something like that, we can do that, or if we have to, we'll fast travel back at the end. I don't intend on doing that a lot, but this was our first setup. I just put out the e collar to see what would happen, and I mean, got a wolf down. We'll just see what it scores later on in the hunt. So maybe not quite the Mule Deer start that we had the last time we came out here to Timbergold Trails. A 294 knot tip would be pretty tough to top. However, if we can make the shot, at least we can claim this guy. So I'm kind of trying to get him to notice us just to stop for a moment. I'm really not a huge fan of taking the shot on the walk with the cable back bow, but I think we're going to have to just to try to get him down. And I think his reaction was really odd. We may have hit him in the spine. Sometimes they'll run off a bit and then lay down. It does look like the shot was high. So that probably was not ideal, but there's another buck coming in. And that was kind of why I was trying to rush that shot. Now we're in a Mule Deer competition as well. And that one is just for your highest average of your three heaviest. So the more Mule Deer bucks we get, the better. And actually, we got the back of a lung, so no complaints there. I think he's trotting around up there. He's not going to go too much further. And we have the X on the map for our Grey Wolf, so we can just leave that marker there. And we'll see what else comes into our call. I guess it really did work out because we ended up with a lung shot, but all that kind of rushing to make a shot and make sure we don't spook this guy, only for it to be a pretty much average size buck with a low weight estimate, so not going to help us with the competition either. But especially because he is kind of lower scoring, I'd like to get him a little bit closer just to try to make for an easier shot and hopefully a drop shot. I do find that frontal shots with the cable back bow from the ground can be kind of tough. So ideally he'll kind of walk towards us and make it a bit easier. He stood there so long. We're able to confirm that our camouflage is active in this area so we can let him get pretty close. And he kind of made that angle a little bit different. So the only way realistically that this is a drop shot probably would be a heart shot. It's just the cable back bow is not going to have the penetration to go through his shoulder and get double lung. However, I'm going to assume, and I'm going to assume incorrectly, that that would have been a lung. If I had to guess between the two shots that we took, I would have said the first one maybe was body and that would have been a lung shot. The good news is by the time we get back over here and get back on the trail, at least he'll have some more time to kind of go and expire. At least the good news is... And actually, that shot doesn't look as bad as it originally seemed like. This buck went down right where we marked, so probably as soon as we looked away, he must have bedded down. Left lung at 21 meters and a 154 score. 118 kg is decent. I think probably for this competition, and by the way, it is single player only, so that is why we're in single player today. But you probably want three over like 125. But I don't know, like if you got two really heavy ones up close to that 140 area, 118 might be enough to kind of keep that average where you'd want it. So not exactly as planned, but 
We finally have our second buck, and I want to see where that shot hit. It was 11 minute wound time, but it felt like we kind of shot through the shoulder, and I was thinking at that range we'd get into a lung. Maybe that was a touch low, but I don't know. That may have been just the cable back not being able to punch through his shoulder. This kind of can be where things get a little bit difficult decision-wise. We've got two gray wolves in here with a fairly low weight estimate, but both go up to 17 on the score estimate, which is pretty solid. And I'm not sure we're going to be incredibly good with this gray wolf comp. Like, we're mostly going to be looking for, you know, anything that goes up to 17. So I think, although it sounds like we've got some on the right here too, probably we'll try to take the one with a slightly better weight estimate, and we'll just kind of see what it becomes. The thing is, weight really doesn't matter in their score, it's only down to their skull size, but kind of naturally, a heavier wolf is more likely to have like a bigger skull, so you do want to see those higher weight estimates, but we're going to take that shot, it's too tempting to not at least try. And actually, I think what we really heard was a grizzly. So, I don't know if the 10 mil is ethical for them. This may be a cable bag thing. It's actually a kind of decent one. 22 to 26. He's probably going to stop there for a second. And one hit's just going to turn him around and send him off. So, let's see where that hit. A lot of times, they'll stand there and just soak up shots. But that was a body shot. Not really something planned, but we may go and try to recover that as well. Got a random mule deer shed there at 124. Just hopefully we made the right call here. And shot looks good, kind of low in the shoulder there. He is 72 kg, hard shot him 121 meters. 15.9's really not gonna cut it though. Now he did, to me, look bigger than the other one that went up to 17 in that pack. And again, that's kind of the thing. When they don't have a really high weight, it's tough to expect them to be really good size. But there's a chance, and I really don't expect to run into a ton of wolves as we're going along. So, not something that we would skull out or anything like that, but at least a, a better one than a random solo female that came in earlier. Luckily, the track for that bear was not too bad. And I think, for the sake of trying to kind of move things along, we'll probably try to go ahead and hit him with the 300 as well. That angle is going to be enough to bring him down, and unlike with the mule deer earlier and the cable back bow, a grizzly bear kind of quartering to is about as good as you can ask for. The lung hitboxes really on all the bear species are kind of odd. They're really, they don't extend too far back into the body. So when you get that quartering angle, you can kind of shoot into the front of the chest. You're much better off doing that oftentimes than shooting really anything behind the crease in the shoulder when broadside. So that worked out well for us. Should have probably paid a little more attention to where he was, but no big deal. He's laying right here in front of us. And with a max weight estimate, I think it'll be pretty decent. The arrow was not bad. Had that been a bit further left, he may have dropped. It was obviously the body shot there. 24, though. Solid bear, 94 GM from that. He would have had probably double what his wound time was before he would have gone down. So, good to take him with the 300. And actually, we're kind of in a good spot here. I was thinking, and maybe we'll go down here and up and around. This general area up here is where I want to spend a good bit of time. It's one of the best kind of crossover wolf and mule deer areas, so that didn't work out too badly bringing us this way. If we thought the grizzly bear was a nice little bonus amount of GM, a random puma down here is going to do a whole lot better now. He is doing his absolute best to hide behind that tree, but whenever he steps out on either side, we're going to go ahead and take the shot. I can tell that's a male just by the size of the skull. Taken forever to spot him, and I wish I could have just for the sake of getting the spotting skill, but we're not going to end up having him spook out here on the road. We don't have camouflage, and it's a really rare opportunity when not up in the mountains to just randomly get a puma when out hunting something else. So I'm hoping for, you know, a solid 15 plus. It is possible to eclipse 16 now on them, and since we couldn't spot it, I have no idea what he might be, but certainly a male. 90 kg, actually not that bad. 15.5, but as you can see, 162 GM. That is the huge plus to uh, getting one of those while out here. And I think you can do a skull mount of them as well, but we have a nice full body mount of a puma already, so probably not something that we want to do in that spot. As for our trophy shot, not the best spot to bring one down, but at least it's kind of all shade, so there's not the bits of sun coming through the leaves. 
And still I would say better lighting than the mule deer that we got in our last hunt out here when it was just kind of still getting light out. But I was thinking we're almost two hours into this hunt. Maybe still wolves and mule deer are going to be up around this mountain. But when you get that far into any hunt, animals can kind of wander around so much it's tough to know what we may actually encounter up here. But as we head into this spot, a bonus puma, we'll always take that. Well, the good news is, I think I figured out where pretty much all the animals were. Right here where we often start our hunts. I mean, there are about a half dozen elk or more, probably 15-ish mule deer between the does and the bucks. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter what we do here. We're going to spook something, and I think because of that, Rather than waiting for this mule deer buck to walk all the way in, I think we might just take him from here. I do have the wolf collar going too, but there's no sign of any of them. So, like I said, we're just going to spook stuff. We might as well get going a little bit sooner here. And once again, make use of the 300. So, that'll drop him. That's going to send animals running absolutely everywhere, but I pretty much expect that no matter what. So, we'll just kind of save the time and get moving on to hopefully somewhere else we can encounter some more gray wolves. And despite the 190 to 220 score estimate, I kind of think he's going to fall just shy of 200. He's got short main beams that I think are going to hurt 193.7 though. Not bad heart shot at 100 meters almost on the dot, but the weight is kind of low which is unfortunate. We're in 6th place right now with an average of just below 100 kg. And I guess for the rest of this hunt and we're about two and a half hours in, either a big gray wolf would be nice, or just trying to get any mule deer that weighs, you know, above maybe 110, whether it is a high scoring one or not. I can't believe this. We've got a gray puma coming in. It looks like a relatively low scoring male. We're down here in the south of the map, which is another area you can encounter them. I've never shot a gray puma and they've been in the game for quite some time now i think coming up on two years i feel like this winter would be two years what are the odds on a hunt where we are in no way shape or form after pumas that we'd have two separate ones in completely different areas i think we're gonna go ahead and use a gun again maybe for the sake of not ruining our eardrums might go with a 10 mil the 300 is rather loud so we'll let him get a little bit closer but i I really was shocked when that started walking in. I thought it was going to be another wolf. We had the call, obviously, the e-callers going, but I just did not believe that could have been a gray puma. That is really cool. I think 30-ish meters should be good. I'm not sure how close they'll get to the e-caller, but pretty sure we should be able to make that shot with the 10 mil. I think the puma actually spooked the mule deer, or maybe some wolves did. I honestly have no idea if pumas do spook deer. I heard that, and it was panic and make the shot before it took off, but I'm pretty sure it was not going to spook the puma anyway. Luckily he dropped. I don't know where I put that. Probably would have had 40 meters so we actually got into the e-collar, but I couldn't remember exactly where that was. That is kill the hunt for me for sure though. That was something I really wanted to get, and of course there are rares, there's albino and melanistic, but I never was fortunate enough to stumble into a gray, so let's see. That guy is 83 kg, a little bit lower than the last, and a 15.17, so I don't think we'll tax it, but I'd say definitely deserving of a trophy shot, and compared to the last, one that we can probably do a much better job of even in the water like this. There's always an angle where you can actually get the water to disappear if you zoom in just right. It kind of goes away, and I don't think that's to make trophy shots nicer, but it really does help when you do shoot something in the water that, you know, you want to take a good picture of. So, pretty cool deal with that. First ever Grey Puma. And it's another one of those things as well. And before I get too sidetracked, by the way, the plan is going to be to hunt our way down and around to where our female wolf is laying from the beginning of the hunt. But slowly but surely, I've been trying to work my way up to 100 kills for every species in the game, because you can get a profile banner that I quite like. And Pumas are one that you're just not going to get a bunch of kills in, you know, any single hunt. Getting two now like that? That's pretty cool. I mean, why not make it three? This one appears to be a female, but they just keep on turning up today, and I'm definitely not going to complain. We rarely get the opportunity to take down one of the hunt, let alone two, you know, a gray in there, and then three. 
Now, I'm not even sure how much a female Puma is worth in terms of GM. Something like that scored by their skull, even a, you know, a one that's towards the bottom end of what they can score, is still percentage-wise not that much below even the highest scoring ones. Once again, I am struggling to find where I'm placing these e-callers, but again, like, surprising turnouts out here for, from species we're not after, but that's as much as I could ask for in terms of making a hunt interesting. But anyway, it'll almost certainly score in the 12 range. 45 kg shot it through the brain and all three neck bones. 12.6, a female puma apparently worth about 35 CSS, so that'd be comparable maybe to, for a mule deer, like a... right about 100 scoring, something like that. Still a, a nice little bonus kill. No sign really of much for wolves or mule deer down here so far. And not a huge surprise on the mule deer front, considering how many we saw over at the lake where we shot our 193, but if there are some pumas as we're walking along down here, if we can get even lucky enough to take another, we'll take those. You know, it may be kind of a case of too little too late, but we finally have a mule deer with a pretty solid weight estimate, 110 to 125, and I actually thought as he was walking in here he may have a chance of topping 200, but he's got a short time, and I think he's got a sticker as well, so he's likely high 180s or 190s again. And we'll kind of see with the cable back what we can accomplish. That I do not love. He sees us. At least we're able to kind of squeeze that shot between the two trees. You never know hitbox wise, especially when you get trees kind of like this that are all stacked together. Sometimes that can be a little bit odd, but let's see if we got lucky or not with our shot. That was a lung shot, so we'll take that. We're getting pretty close to where our gray wolf's laying, so... Nice little bonus to kind of increase our average for the competition. You know, maybe it's the angle, but that buck had a better frame than I thought. That short tide and stuff's still gonna hurt, and he does, I think, have actually two small stickers there on his left antler. Curious to see what he ends up at, 119 kg, 187, so it would have been maybe like a, a 203 with a perfect uh, frame, given what he had. But that puts our average now at 111, we're in fourth place. I can't remember with this competition. I can quickly check and see. And it does actually end tonight. So I record these videos a day at a time, almost always. And I was hoping to maybe get to continue this competition effort on stream. So that unfortunately is not gonna get to happen. And we are 8kg shy now with our average of third place. So we would need a couple of way bigger bucks. And unless there's a group with some really big ones just kind of over this hill, we are kind of getting close to wrapping this hunt up. We're 3 hours and 15 minutes in, I think 10-ish kills. And once we get over here and get to where our wolf is down, we're going to be wrapping this one up. And as it would turn out, no more bucks down in this area. And again, not a huge surprise, considering how many were up to our northwest. But to hopefully get up here to claim an animal that we shot over three hours ago. Curious to see just kind of what that ended up as, but actually a hard shot from the 10 mil at 12 meters. I think an appropriate way to wrap up this hunt. 14.8 score and a 21 CSS. Honestly, how that competition must have just started. And it has, but I just realized I misread the start and end time. So the mule deer competition also just recently started. And therefore, maybe we will actually come back to Timbergold and hunt a little bit here tonight. I rarely get to put a bunch of time into this competition. And I think whatever we're at 110-ish kg as our average is a pretty good starting point. We have one around 120. If we could get a couple in that kind of 130-ish range, we might be all right. So maybe that'll be what we do on stream this evening. And maybe we can continue hunting for a wolf skull for the trophy lodge. No luck getting that today, but honestly, I mean... Maybe not quite comparable to a 294 non-tip to start the hunt like we had two weeks ago, but considering the fact that we had three different Pumas, our first gray Puma ever, a couple of 185 plus mule deer bucks, this was a really solid hunt. And I think throughout, a little more fun even than that last one. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.